Another day, another early morning. Today, we are on the search for open water. Open water is kind of like the holy grail in the Canadian Rockies during this time of year. It's been probably minus 20 and below pretty consistently for the last week. So that means most locations have frozen over, most lakes and most rivers. So we're really trying to find those kind of locations where you're still gonna get those really good sunrises and those good reflections. And that is why this morning I am starting off my day at Policeman's Creek in Canmore. So we are going to go and shoot, hopefully a reflection of the three sisters just behind me here. So I'm parked at the dog park on the Calgary side of Canmore. And to get to the three sisters, I have to go under a little bridge and through some woods over the other side there. And those woods are actually home well, quite often home to cougars. I've been through there before and heard them kind of chirping away in the trees. I've heard of other photographers having um, encounters with cougars through there. So today I'm not going alone. I have invited my friend Will along, who I'm meeting here. Just a bit of safety in numbers. And I also have some bear spray with me as well. Luckily it's warmed up a little bit today. It's only about minus 11, which is great because I did forget my extra warm down jacket but I think Will has something for me, but let's get the morning started. Good morning, William. Good morning, sir. We're getting festive today. These are the woods just before the, uh, before the creek where I believe there are some cougars that live here. But we haven't heard or seen anything thus far, so I think we're probably safe. As you can see, Will has come through and got me an extra jacket. But this is Policeman's Creek. And this, honestly, this is like one of the last places to freeze probably around Canmore and, and in Banff. But as it's been so cold for so long, you can see the whole river's frozen over. So this is where you'd normally get these really nice reflections with three sisters in the background. And I'll actually throw up a couple of images with those reflections in to show you what you can get here. But I mean, because of this, we're not gonna shoot here. We're gonna try and walk a little bit further kind of round the corner here. The Bow River is over there, but we might be able to find some cool leading lines or even a little bit of open water, but not a lot of success so far with the open water thing, but fingers crossed we can find some around the corner. As you can tell, it really is the reflection that makes this location. If you get perfect conditions with still water, and colourful clouds, you can just get some incredible images. Just uh, walking along the creek, um, trying to see if we can scope out some compositions. I think, to be honest with you, this is frozen quite recently, or like the snow falling on top tends to insulate the ice and make the top of the the creek kind of soft, so it's a bit unnerving, kind of walking through getting wet feet occasionally, but I think um, I think it's pretty solid. It's just the top of it's melted because the snow's fallen on top of it, from what I understand. It's not particularly deep anyway, so if we went in, I think we'd be all right. Not sure if you could uh, hear the cracking of the ice as you're walking along it. But as I mentioned, like even if you go through, it's only a few inches deep, so it's not really a big problem. I have waterproof boots on, but God, it's a little bit unnerving moving around and having your feet kind of hear the cracks and your feet fall through. So I found some open water. That's actually the Bow River that runs all the way through the Bow Valley. It starts at Bow Glacier and Bow Lake on the Icefield Parkway, runs through Banff, Canmore, and all the way through to Calgary and beyond. But it's a big river, it's fast flowing, 
So it doesn't tend to freeze, but it's not really offering much composition wise. I'm not getting a reflection because it's just moving too fast and it's a really hard location to shoot uh, from here. So oh yeah, unfortunately, it is a bit frustrating that that creek's not open. I'm still gonna try and get a couple of snaps, I think. Um, see what happens when the light comes up and starts hitting these peaks. And then I think I have a guaranteed piece of open water for tonight. So I think we've decided to bail on Policeman's Creek. Like the foreground here is just like really, really busy. If you haven't got a reflection, it is quite hard to shoot. Um, you know, there, there's ice, some of it's a bit reflective, but we're not quite getting the light. And also, yeah, just all this kind of, kind of the shrubbery without the leaves and the snow, it does just look a bit too busy. But Will here has just mentioned about a new spot that I've never been to. He says, kind of over towards Three Sisters a bit closer, there is like a little waterfall bit. So we might be able to find a really cool foreground of some frozen waterfall or maybe a little bit of running water. But we're gonna go and check that out. So this is actually a new location for Will as well, but he's heard about it and we're kind of scoping it. Uh, you can kind of see now we've got this like river that's just flowing behind us here and going towards the three sisters behind us. So there's a bit of open water and there's definitely some potential here, if not now, then in the summer. But what we're going to do is we're going to start right down the far end and kind of walk back up and see if we can find a foreground. We don't want to disturb it straight away. So start at the far end and work our way up. It's probably the best way to go. After a little while, we did what any good photographer would do and started Googling the location to copy other people's compositions. I don't know, like, I'm only joking. We actually found some really good foreground interest. So this is turning out to actually be a really cool little spot. There's like so many foreground options and it's definitely somewhere I'm gonna log in the memory bank for summer as well, but um, we're gonna try a couple of different shots maximizing these foregrounds. What I'm doing is I'm getting down really, really low. And you can see here, like, I'm gonna do a focus stack and exposure bracketing. So I'm gonna focus right in the foreground, focus in the mid, and focus in the background, and shoot like a bracket of five different exposures for each one, just so that I know I have all the information that I could possibly need. One thing is I don't really like this tree just in the corner here, but to be honest with you, I'll probably just get rid of that in Photoshop later on. So yeah, I think uh, we all came through with a really good location. It's definitely one I'm gonna revisit in the summertime, but there's so much option for kind of leading lines and getting really low and getting those kind of running bits of water. And I think with the right light on the mountains, you could really get some really good shots here, but we're getting pretty cold. I've been standing in on ice or in frozen rivers for quite a while. So I'm gonna go in, warm up the toes, grab some breakfast uh, before waiting to shoot sunset. I'm in a new location and as you can see behind me, I've done it, the Holy Grail. It's um, open water after a week of minus 20. As I was walking down, I was actually a little bit worried there wasn't gonna be any because I couldn't quite see it, but Emerald Lake, uh, which is about maybe an hour to an hour and a half west of Banff, um, always really has this kind of like little section here just at the front that's that's open pretty much all year round. There must be some kind of like thermal spring that runs into the lake here, but you get those epic reflections and you can see here, this is the Cilantro Lodge. This is like a restaurant on the edge of the lake and you get that reflecting in the pond and the mountains behind. So it's ideal. Um, it's actually really good for blue hour photography as well when the lights come on in this hut. So that's going to be my location for that. There is really nice light in some of the mountains behind me though. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a walk around and actually see if I can get some compositions without the lake in it, but with the mountain that you can't quite see behind the trees. But there you go, finally done it. So in the summer, this whole lake you can kind of see behind me here. This is all open and you can shoot from all sorts of different areas. So you've got this pretty iconic mountain peak here in the lodge and you'll get reflections all the way through. 
but obviously given the weather and given it's winter this whole lake has frozen bar that one little bit kind of that we looked at earlier on but I'm going to try and take advantage of this golden light and maybe get one or two shots from around the other side use a bit of a longer lens for a bit of maybe compression against the hut and the mountain see what I can get like that and then as the sun comes down and we get the blue hour and the lights turn on we'll go back to the reflections So I tried my best to get a few different shots, just kind of back towards the nicer light. But one of the challenges with the Canadian Rockies in the kind of depths of the winter is that those lakes that used to once offer beautiful reflections or foregrounds made up of logs and rocks are now just vast, blank, white canvases. So they can be tricky to shoot because there's no real foreground or midground interest, which is why, to be honest with you, I do kind of search out and travel to get to these locations that I know have some good open water. But yeah, let me know what you think of those in the comments below. And now on to shoot the reflection. So what I'm trying to do now around at the reflection pond is I'm gonna leave my camera in place and do what I would probably call a time blend. So I'm taking some pictures now when there's golden light on the mountains and reflecting in the pool. And then I'm gonna leave the camera there for maybe like half an hour until the sun comes down and the lights come on in the hut. And then I'm gonna combine those two images together so you have golden light and the warm glow from the huts inside. It's a good little technique that I do use relatively often if I can, um, just to combine those two kind of exposures for maybe half an hour apart. But after that, I might move around the amount of reflection I'm getting is kind of dictated by um, the ice and how close I can stand. So I've risen the camera up so that I can try and clear the reflection of the top of the mountain and not have it cut off too much by the ice in the lake. Not sure how well you can see the back of my camera here, but just down the bottom here, this is the reflection. And you can see the ice that's kind of running around. So I've put my tripod as high as it can go and it's kind of just clearing so you can see the whole top of the mountain. Ideally, I would like to go a little bit higher because I don't think it's perfect, but unfortunately, that is just dictated by the height of my tripod. I've driven three hours from Calgary to find this open water and there's a goddamn duck swimming around ruining the reflection. It's getting there, the lights are coming on slowly. Uh, it's getting pretty cold waiting, but we're getting there, maybe 10, 15 more minutes. And here are the results. One of my favorite images from Emerald Lake. Made from two different shots, one taken at golden hour when light was hitting the peaks, and one at blue hour once the lights in the hut had turned on. Combined for a more dynamic image. And here are a couple extra. I think I'm gonna to have to call it a, a day there. Like my hands are getting really cold and my feet are actually a little bit wet from this morning. Uh, just kind of walking up and down that creek. So they're getting really cold as well. Um, but I mean, what a day, you know, found some open water, got some great pictures and found a location in Canmore that I've never been to before. And I will definitely revisit in the summer. So once again, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I hope these videos are helping some of you get some shots out in the Rockies. Um, but please do subscribe, I really appreciate it and it motivates me to make more content and I have lots of things planned in the future. But until then, I will see you on the next one.